I would make a Friends joke, but um, I actually never really watched that much Friends, so apologies in advance. At practice, I was an ace. I couldn't miss. But in the game... Tell me you ain't gonna throw the curve, Tip. You ain't gonna throw the curve, Tip. Things were going from bad to worse. A little word to the wise. You choke, you croak. Until someone came along... I'm supposed to pick up a ball player to lend me a hand. <laughs> Meet Ed Sullivan. Welcome aboard, dude! He can catch. <laughs> he can throw. <laughs> he can swing. Ed, get down. Pulls you drive, too. And now, he's turning Jack's luck around. On the field. <laughs> and off. He's a great friend. The lucky Jack. Tell me about it. Matt LeBlanc. Bad monkey! <laughs> you know how with a show like Seinfeld, when uh, the show is in its peak, there are like occasional projects that happen before, during, and after Seinfeld that have like some of the main players in it? Like there was a couple of shows that had Jason Alexander, and every time you watch it, you're like, oh yeah, good for him getting more work, but uh, it's, it's kind of hard to see him not as George Costanza. Uh, apparently the same mentality happened with the cast of Friends. More importantly, today we're going to be talking about one of the many movies that had Joey, uh, Matt LeBlanc, and um, it's a movie where him and a chimpanzee play baseball. Jack Cooper, played by Matt LeBlanc, could be a world-class baseball pitcher if he didn't keep bucking under the pressure. He tries to keep his spirits up after he's traded to a minor league team, but loses all hope when he discovers that Ed, one of his teammates, is a chimp. Ed used to be the team mascot, but was promoted to third base when the owners realized he had a talent for baseball. As Jack struggles to get used to his new surroundings, Ed helps to regain his confidence on and off field. And like a lot of movies here on Blockbusters, the uh, reception for this movie is not that good. Uh, we have 1.6 out of 5 on Letterboxd, 25% on Metacritic, and shockingly, the same rating as the last movie we talked about, Devilfish, 2.7 out of 10. Which is weird because, unlike Devilfish, this actually looks like a legitimate movie. Still not a very good one, but still, it looks a lot better than Devilfish did. So the beginning of the movie feels like a lot of your typical sports comedies. You have the lovable loser, the, the screw-up. And in this case, it's Matt LeBlanc's character of Jack, but for the sake of this review, I'm just going to keep calling him Joey because that's how most people know him. He lives on his family's farm, and he wants to be a famous baseball player, and apparently he has a rocket for an arm. But, uh, he, you know, he's just, he's just not what the team that he's a part of is looking for because he keeps cracking under pressure. And just so you know that the team they're going up against are mean and brutish, uh, they call them the Devils, and they show a guy cartoonishly put some like chewing tobacco on his mouth, spit it out, and then he growls like, Urgh, like, like that. Believe me, that is just one of the many times this movie starts to veer out into trying to be a live action cartoon for some reason. Then you get to the typical evil manager who's only obsessed with money, and I swear to God, not since Barry Boswick in um, Bigger, Fatter, Liar have I seen such a cartoonishly over-the-top, stereotype, evil businessman in a movie. What the hell is this? Innovation, chub. Dad bought him from the estate of a Mr. Mickey Mantle. It'll put butts in the bleachers, and that, my friend, is money in the bank. Come on, you're not serious, are you? Look at me, chub. Chub. Do I look like I'm joking? He wants more money, and so he finally comes across the, the big thing that this company is looking for, something that's going to put their team over the edge. And in this case, it's a chimpanzee that can play baseball named Ed. Instead of getting a real chimpanzee to play baseball, because that'd obviously be very difficult to do, to actually get it to, to seem realistic, instead they have an actor donning a monkey suit. And, I mean, it looks realistic for the most part, but... That's kind of the problem with it. It's a little too realistic, and it comes off very creepy in Uncanny Valley.
Now, let's just take time out to appreciate the fact that, yes, this is a real movie. It's a movie about a monkey that plays baseball. You thought that a movie about a dog that could play basketball was far-fetched? Ho oh, ho. You ain't seen Ed from 1996. It was at that point I just started thinking, like, who actually thought this was a genius idea for a movie? Like, yeah, I know sports family movies with cute animals was kind of a big thing in the late 90s, like, like it previously mentioned with Air Bud. But, I mean, Joey from Friends and a monkey playing baseball? Like, did someone really sit there and think, that's brilliant! Who knows, maybe it was the same genius that decided, hey, let's make a movie with Whoopi Goldberg and a reject from that dinosaur sitcom with Theodore Rex. Wouldn't surprise me, that movie came out a year before this one did. So from there, you get a bunch of cliche story beats and a bunch of cliche characters that the movie doesn't even really do a whole lot with. Set up that Joey has a rival. You set up that there's a guy who's a bit of a screw up even more so than Joey on the team. You have an obvious comic relief character who's dumb. And they don't really do anything with these characters. They're just kind of there. The best characters in the movie are these two veteran ball players, and like their whole thing is they're trying to figure out who they think is going to do well and who they think is going to get sacked from the team. Uh, they have this whole scene where they're trying to flip a coin to see like who they think is going to go where. And they establish this reoccurring thing where they keep checking on the coin because it lands perfectly smack dab in the center. It, d it never falls on one or either side and then they just keep checking on it, and it's still on its side. And I was like, okay, well, is this gonna go anywhere? And it really kind of doesn't. Cooper. Because the chimpanzee, Ed, is a bit of a recluse, and because he's a monkey, they need him to stay somewhere, so they ask Joey, Hey, well, we'll pay for this apartment, and we want you to take care of him. So, from there it just becomes what basically feels like a sitcom episode with two bachelors trying to hit it up in the same apartment and learn to get along. Except the big twist is, of course, it's Joey from Friends and a monkey. And because this is a family movie from the late 90s, you obviously have to have a bunch of forced toilet humor. So there's a bunch of parts where the monkey pisses and farts. Not my bathroom. Get out of there. I'm warning you. Don't you do it. Oh, bad monkey, bad. Damn it. Get out of there. That was lowbrow when the Adam Sandler monkey kept mentioning that it throws shit in Zookeeper. <sighs> This movie has that one cornered. Going back to my point with characters who just kind of show up and don't really do a whole lot. Uh, you have the obligatory love interest. She works at a diner and she has a daughter. And of course she lives in the same uh, apartment area that they live in. So of course, eventually Joey's gonna get closer to her and they're gonna go on a date. I just gotta say, it was the 90s. It was a different time, I get that. And really, this just kind of comes off as just an unfunny joke more than anything. But how they set up the date is really awkward because he's talking to her daughter and she says this. Hey, Deuce. Yes, Vera. Are you gay? What? It'd be okay, no biggie. Uh, I guess that girl wanted Joey and Chandler to get together at the end of Friends. I don't know. Point is, they go out on a date, they fall in love, and, uh... This is going on while the monkey and the daughter are making a mess of the apartment and, you know, they find out that they're going to be coming home soon and then you get this wacky sped up montage of them trying to clean the place up, but uh-oh, they come home and they see the place is a mess. Oh, wacky. Take out the papers and the trash. That's one of the things I gotta bring up with this movie. It has no idea what tone it's trying to go for. It doesn't know if it wants to be a screwball comedy, like if it wants to be a live action cartoon type of thing, because several times you have goofy cartoon sound effects that are played, and at one point you have a character whose eyes turn into cartoon dollar signs. 
top of that, just it's such a silly premise of, oh, a monkey that plays baseball. And they show that the monkey is great at baseball when they throw the, he, he throws a pitch and it goes right through a glove with like flames and everything, like a cartoon, like it left some kind of massive hole. The longest time I thought this movie was a Warner Brothers movie, like this was them trying to be like, oh, we're making goofy cartoony movies again. Like, I mean, then I realized, oh wait, this was the same year they made Space Jam. So they are, they already had their, their game set on one of those kind of movies already. Except Space Jam, in all of its flaws, actually feels relatively consistent with its insanity. Maybe it's just because it's a Looney Tunes property, so maybe some of it you can forgive. This movie, there are points later on in the film where it takes a very serious turn and you're like, wait, so now you want me to take this shit seriously? I mean, when they first bring Ed in to be a part of the team and play the game, they have like some, I think he was the umpire or something, come out and say like, oh, um, baseball is America's game. Everyone should be allowed to play baseball in America. People of different races, creeds, genders, and species. Baseball is America's game. Every American, regardless of race, creed, color, species, body hair, brain size, has the right to play the game. So it's like, wait, you already established that this is a monkey that plays baseball and he plays it very well. Why all of a sudden do we need to stop and go, wait, should we let the monkey play baseball? Especially considering they, they also throw out the, the obvious joke of, well, in the rule book, there's nothing about not letting monkeys play on the team. <laughs> But jumping near the end of the movie, they have it that the evil corrupt manager sells the monkey to be a mascot, which, and he sells him for a relatively low price too. And I'm just like, okay, if this is supposed to be a stereotype corrupt evil business person, you think he would have sold him for a higher sum of money and you think he would have sold him to, to play baseball, you know, and some other, you think after showing this monkey is so good, it's worth putting his face on magazine covers as the next big thing in baseball. You think that another team would try to pick that up and make him a member of their team. But no, he sells him to be a, a mascot in a clown suit. And of course they show that he's put in a cage and there's people like trying to electrocute him just for sick fucking pleasure. Uh, Joey has a conversation with his girlfriend and his girlfriend says, oh, you should get Ed back. Ed was one of the best things that happened to your life. So uh, Joey goes in to save Ed. They take out some of the goons. They do that thing where you put a character in a cage and you know, for the longest time they can't escape. And then when other characters show up to save them, then all of a sudden they're strong enough to rip through bars or squeeze through. <laughs> So yeah, the monkey and Joey escape. Then they have this whole thing that starts off as a joke and then it becomes oddly serious. While they're trying to escape, Ed ends up hopping into an ice cream truck and then he starts to catch cold from hypothermia and then he ends up in the hospital and they play it oddly seriously. That's what I'm talking about with the total confusion. You're like, okay, so now all of a sudden we're supposed to take this seriously in a movie where Joey and a monkey play baseball. And especially how they set that up with, oh, look, they're trying to make a getaway. And oh, look, the monkey hops into an ice cream truck. And, like, and then they all of a sudden take it seriously. Like, oh my God, this monkey's not gonna make it. He might die. It's like, whoa, that's a little bit harsh movie. <laughs> seen shit like that since the scene where the dog got hit by a car in My Magic Dog. You have this wacky movie where it's about a dog that becomes a ghost and can talk and you have all of that set up by the fact that the dog got hit by a car. It really fucks with your emotions, man. It really does. Of course, this is exactly what Joey needs to motivate him to go out and win the big game. And he does well, kind of flounders a little bit. And then his girl and her daughter and Ed show up. And they all cheer him on and that motivates him. And, oh, he wins the big game. So now he's going to join the team. And so from there, he gets picked up by a better team. And he's off to spend his new life with uh, his girlfriend and her daughter. And they even 
even bring Ed along. Isn't that so sweet? But like I said, the biggest problem with this movie is the tonal confusion. It really doesn't know if it wants to be a relatively serious movie with a goofy premise, or if it wants to just be a live action cartoon where nothing is taken seriously. They even do the thing where like they speed footage up like it's a Three Stooges episode or something, where the monkey is driving a truck because Joey is too drunk to drive. <laughs> Um, and then they immediately follow that scene with them both pissing into the same toilet. It's not comfortable. Far from the worst thing I've ever sat through, but it is a very, very stupid movie. I mean, on some level, it knows that, but... At the same time, I don't think it really excuses the tonal confusion. Just overall lame comedy. I mean, there's lots of just goofy shit that's just a little too much for me. I mean, you know, mugging, constant over-the-top performances, nobody taking it all that seriously except when they want to take it seriously, cartoon sound effects. It really just takes you out of the movie and you're just like, all right, this is, this is dumb. The thing is, I really wanted to see this movie just out of morbid curiosity. I was expecting it to be really stupid. But I, I kept seeing ads for it when I was growing up. Every time I, I had these old VHS tapes of movies I would watch, and they always had ads for it at the beginning. And growing up, as a little kid, I would see it and be like, oh, it's about a monkey that plays baseball. And yeah, that is in the movie, but like a lot of it's just done through montage. Like, the, you know, they show that he does really well on their first game, and then they do the thing where they show magazines of like, oh, the next big thing in baseball. And it's just like, like, it's just kind of over and done. There's not really a whole lot of Joey and the monkey playing on the same team, aside from, like, one scene. And speaking of dumb, tune in next time where we have not one, but two bad Eddie Murphy movies. We're finally returning to Eddie Murphy once again. Um, I was relatively nice when it came to the Haunted Mansion movie he was in when I reviewed that. But now we're going for uh, what a lot of people say are two of Eddie Murphy's worst movies. We're going to be talking about Norbit and A Thousand Words. But until then, I'm Adam Sykes of the Blockbuster Show, and we will see you guys in the next video. I'm gonna spank that monkey.